Church of the Valley. Um, we have a few announcements before we get started. We are going to start collecting toilet paper tubes. Um, we use them to create holiday candy tubes for the Murrieta Food Pantry. Wrap them, put candy inside, wrap them up, and um, give them out with kind of the holiday meal kit um, at the end of the year. So we need to start collecting those as you are using up toilet paper and you find yourself with those tubes that you can bring them here. Um, where are we collecting those? If you put them on the table, I'll take them upstairs because we have a big basket there. We'll put maybe a basket out or something to collect them. So thank you for your help with that. Um, next week, we will be blessing the backpacks for back to school. Every year, we donate backpacks filled with school supplies to the Walden Family Services for foster kids in our area. Um, you can see there's already quite a few backpacks filled, some unfilled. Um, you can donate backpacks, um, school supplies, or cash, and our dedicated shoppers will pick up the supplies. Uh, we have some teachers who uh, know what kids need and make sure those are filled well. Um, help our foster youth get off to a good start. Um, in, in addition to the backpacks we'll be donating, all students and teachers are encouraged to bring their own backpacks, and um, they will be blessed with prayers for a great school year. Um, for everyone's safety due to the current high instances of COVID, please wear a mask unless medical conditions prohibit use of a face covering. Masks are available for anyone who needs them. We have extras at the front. And since we are ready to begin our service, please pause your speech, silence your cell phones, and come to stillness so we can begin the recording. Yeah, <laughs> is um, excuse me, circle chat, which we've done a few times before. And um, Jamie says we need to keep doing the same one so we get it learned right. So, can I have a day, Carol? So, it's sing, sing along if you remember, if not. You'll hear it a few times and circle round for freedom, circle round for peace.
join me in the call to presence. Choose to bless the world. Your gifts, whatever you discover them to be, can be used to bless or curse the world. Choose, Choose to, to bless, bless the world. world. The mind's power, the strength of the hands, the reaches of the heart. Choose to the world. Any of these can serve to feed the hungry, welcome the stranger, praise what is sacred, do the work of justice, or offer love. Choose to bless the world. Any of these can draw down the prison door, pour bread, abandon the poor, obscure what is holy, comply with injustice, or withhold love. Choose to bless the world. You must answer this question. What will you do with your gifts? You should use to bless the world. The choice to bless the world is more than an act of will, a moving forward into the world with the intention to do good. It is an act of recognition, a confession of surprise, a grateful acknowledgement that in the midst of a broken world, unspeakable beauty, grace, and mystery abide. You choose to bless the world. None of us alone can save the world. Together, that is another possibility. Justice for the earth, shalom for all alike. Side by side, let the nations work for real justice for all lives. Oh. 
The first is from Jeremiah 23, verses 23 through 29. Am I a God nearby, says the Lord, and not a God far off? Already food for God. Who can hide in secret places so that I cannot see them, says the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth? I have heard what the prophets have said who prophesy lies in my name saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long will the hearts of the prophet ever turn back? Those who prophesy lies and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart. They plan to make my people forget my name by their dreams that they tell one another, just as their ancestors forgot my name for Baal. Let the prophet who has a dream tell the dream, but let the one who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat, says the Lord, is not my word like fire and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces. Second verse is Psalm 82. God has taken his place in the divine council. In the midst of the gods, he holds judgment. How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Selah. Give justice to the weak and the orphan. Maintain the right of the lowly and the destitute. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. They have neither knowledge nor understanding. They walk around in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. I say, you are God's children of the Most High, all of you. Nevertheless, you shall die like mortals and fall like any prince. Rise up, O God, judge the earth, for all the nations belong to you. And finally, John 14, 6, from the Message Bible Translation. Jesus said, I am the road, also the truth, also the life. No one gets to the Father apart from me. Thank you, Kira, for uh, enduring my long scripture passages. Um, this morning, I'd like to talk about justice, both the noun and the verb. For centuries, sadak, the Hebrew word for justice, and its close relative, sadaka, charity, have attracted the great minds of Judaism, as well as prominent Christian theologians, what we might think of as an all-star team. Now, the close relationship of the words sadak and sadaka, along with sadiq, or a righteous person, is a reflection 
of the triliteral root system, a central beauty of Hebrew and a defining feature of all Semitic languages. Here, these shared roots tell us to think deeply about how justice, charity, and being righteous are all linked. Now, while this might seem merely charming, a nice topic for after dinner conversation, the scriptures loudly insist that Sadak is actually a life or death issue. The strongest argument for the importance of Sadak comes interestingly enough in Deuteronomy um, found in 1620. This verse, Hebrew scriptures specifically connects the pursuit of justice with life itself. It says, justice, justice shalt thou follow that thou mayest live. That's how the 1917 um, Jewish Publication Society translation translated it. Yes, it said live. But it must also be said that not everyone translates Sadak as justice. Translator Ever, Everett Fox in the Shokin Bible intriguingly renders Sadak as equity. I thought about justice versus equity and found myself wondering what exactly Sadak means. Shoshan, the authoritative Hebrew dictionary, points out that in addition to the Hebrew, both Aramaic and Arabic, the words, though pronounced a little differently, have the same meaning of he told the truth. I wondered why I hadn't thought about it this way before. What is just is what is true, or to put it another way, justice is truth. I think um, that our passage in Jeremiah speaks of this when it says that the prophets were not interested in Sadak. They had no interest in honesty or the path or way of truth. Of course, this also immediately brought to mind Jesus's declaration in John when he said that he was the way, the truth, and the life. Perhaps this is what he was saying, that the way of truth or justice would bring life. It is certainly reasonable as a Hebrew and Aramaic speaking Jew who grew up with this understanding of justice. He then reminds us that no one comes to God except through him. The Message Bible puts it like this. I am the road, also the truth, also the life. No one gets to the Father apart from me. If you really knew me, you would know the Father as well. From now on, you do know me. You do know him. You've even seen him. So medieval Jewish scholar and Sephardic rabbi, Namana, I can never pronounce his name, Nachmanides, known in Hebrew as the Ramban, seems to understand what Jesus may have been saying as well. Don't you just love it when wisdom can be found in unlikely places? The first and foremost source of real Sadak, Ramban says, his exact words are Rishon Shadak Masha, Mamash, is the Shekinah or the presence of God. In other words, God is justice. So yes, follow Jesus's way of justice and you will know God. This God who is justice is described clearly in the Psalm we heard this morning. Here God is amongst a divine council of gods. Now there's debate in scholarly circles as to who or what these lowercase g gods were. They may have been the human judges some sort of spiritual beings, or perhaps even the congregation of Israel before the law was given um, at Sinai. The Psalms may have even been referencing polytheism. Regardless, capital G God is over this council and is not at all happy. There's a definite lack of justice 
by those who are supposed to be the ones handing out God's idea of justice and equity. And it's evidently been happening long enough that it needs to be addressed. The Psalm tells us that these lowercase g gods shall die like mortals and fall like any prince. In other words, they'll, these shall not be immortal gods because of their unjustly judgments. Marin Tarabasi, pastor, poet laureate, and editor of UCC's Living Psalms book, rewrites the 82nd Psalm like this. God has taken a place in the most supreme of courts. In the midst of every faith in the world, a spirit of holiness holds judgment lightly in open hands of mercy and tenderness. How long will human judges speak unjustly and show partiality to the wicked, to those who impose their will on others, who speak for the wealthy, who misuse the name of Christian, give justice to the weak and the orphan, maintain the right of the lowly and the destitute, rescue the weak and the needy, deliver them from the hand of the wicked. Judges have taken choice away, protected so-called rights of weapon bearers, limited indigenous policing on their own native lands, made weaker the rights to warning about testimony, but more available death by firing squad. Give justice to the weak and the orphan, maintain the right of the lowly and the destitute, rescue the weak of the needy, deliver them from the hand of the wicked. The foundations of nature itself are shaken, but God is supreme in the sacred courts and stands for the most vulnerable in every corner of the earth. Rise up, judge, and be the teacher of judges. Now, in this week's Thursday Thoughts, I said there were a couple of different ways we can become lower case G gods. Whether reading the lectionary psalm or this provocative modern retelling, this is one way. But folks, this is not the path we should choose as it clearly does not lead to life. Jesus tries to say this in John 10. 34 through 36, when he was brought before the wicked council of his day, he had said that he and God were one, and the authorities immediately decided to stone him when Jesus quotes the 82nd Psalm, thus putting his accusers in the same category as the lowercase g gods who had their immort immor immortality revoked. The scripture reads, Jesus answered, is it not written in your law? I said, you are gods. If those to whom the word of God came were called gods and the scripture cannot be annulled, can you say that the one whom the father has sanctified and sent into this world is blaspheming because I said, I am God's son? A little later in John 14, 6, Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. By following the way of Jesus, the epitome of a sadiq, we find truth and life and God. God is justice. And when we dedicate our lives to seeking and creating justice, we may just become lower case. G gods ourselves, ones that are partners in restoring God's design for God's kingdom through truth and equity and justice for all of life forevermore. Or as Deuteronomy says, justice, justice shalt thou follow that you mayest live. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Jen, for sharing that this morning. Lots to think about. All right. At the United Church of the Valley, 
that's us. We seek to be inclusive of all people. We strive for peace and justice among all people. We strive to protect and restore the integrity of our earth. And we commit to a path of lifelong learning, compassion, and love. We invite you to be part of this mission, and we thank you for your generosity. There is a collection plate on the organ right here. For those who are here in person would like to um, give that way. And of course, all of us can make a donation by going to our website, ucpchurch.org, where you can use either Venmo or PayPal. Of course, you can always mail checks as well to our mailing address, um, PO Box 1312, Marietta, California, 92564. Yeah. In a beloved community, that's also us, people care about one another, we care about one another, and we share our joys, our sorrows, and concerns, keeping abreast of what is going on in each other's lives, and it helps us know that we truly are part of that beloved community. Every week we gather joys and concerns of our community through email, so that we can share them together during the week and also today, this morning, when we gather. They will be shown on the screen um, as I read them aloud. And after each joy or concern, I will say, together we pray, and we'll respond together with, hear us, O oh God. So the first one, um, continuing prayers for Neil Toon. This is a long journey. Um, and the whole Far Toon family for Neil's treatment. Together we pray. Um, another long journey of healing, Continu continuing prayers for Sandy Selby's husband, Paul, as he continues to recover and rehab after back surgery. Together we pray. Um, are there any people either here in person or on Zoom who would like to share a joy or concern? Rick. Yeah. A joy. Uh, Jenna and Amy, Amy's boyfriend Richard, are buying a house what? in Menifee. They'll be, right now it's projected that the house will be finished and they'll be moving in in March. Yeah, that is so exciting. I was talking to her just a month ago. She was so frustrated and wanting to make that happen. That's beautiful. Um, together we pray. Yeah. My nephew, Eddie, I told him last week had a uh, triple bypass surgery. Well, he was supposed to come out and stay nine days with me starting tomorrow. And he was doing so well. But last night about three o'clock, he got out of bed, fell, cut the back of his head. He's in Mission Hospital right now. And they suture the head. There's no bleeding in the brain, but they feel like they need to send him back to the Kaiser Hollywood. To see what's going on. He was doing so well. We were so excited about him coming out and seeing the same girl. So we will set back there. Yeah. Absolutely. Together we pray. Yeah, on Zoom. Um, Steve's health status. Um, everything's still a little uncertain. He's mostly immobilized due to the ongoing pain in his left hip, waiting for a referral to an orthopedist. If it's not one thing, it's another. He says, thanks for all your prayers and good thoughts. And I wish she was there for you, with you. Oh, yeah, we wish you were, could be here too. Hi, Steve. Uh, uh, one other thing I want everyone to know is that uh, my longtime home, the house in Lake Elsinore, is going to close escrow this Friday. I've sold my house. Oh, my uh, that's That's a... A mixed feeling because I lived at that address for 25 years, longer than I've ever lived any other single place. So it it's the right time to move on. The new home is fabulous, and uh, it's it's a joyful moment, in spite of hips and whatnot. <laughs> So for um, Steve's house selling, a joy and um, great gratitude for all those years, and then prayer for um, Steve's head. Together we pray. Yeah. So Ellie came through her surgery very, very well. 
she ended up having several teeth pulled and several lumps removed. And um, she's doing extremely well. She did, uh, the, that's the joy, the concern is she did pull out some of her stitches this morning. So I'm going to have to take her and get them received her tomorrow. But um, she's doing really, really well for, for an old age. Yeah. So for beloved Ellie and um, her surgeries and her team, together we pray. Yeah, that's um, Edna, is there another one? Um, yeah, Edna says she's still better, but still under the weather. So prayers for continued healing. Absolutely, Edna. I'm so glad you could join us this morning virtually. Together we pray for healing. Yes, Charles. So my leave to Japan was partially denied because oh. I have to get a special, it has to go to the highest level because of the COVID requirements with Japan and the Department of Defense. And it's going to take time now. So, but my, uh, everybody that I work with is really supportive. So just pray that I can get everything approved because my plane tickets have already been purchased and my kids are really excited to see it. Yeah. <laughs> so, All right, we're traveling to Japan. to Japan. Together we pray. Um, a lot of us know my daughter Phoebe, uh, my second, second or my third child, my younger daughter. Um, we are moving her to college next weekend, and um, she has always been, and here I am publicly sharing all of this because this is our beloved community, but um, somehow the world, she is not of this world in a lot of ways, <laughs> so sending her out into it um, feels a little a little nerve wracking um, because she just has a very generous heart and money means nothing to her. And it's all about relationships and people and art. And um, I just pray for her, um, her to learn all those adulting things, um, but still get to be her beauty self. So together we pray. Any others? Yes, Lori. Uh, we had a new big granddaughter. What's her name? Cora Jane. Oh, for Cora Jane, we are so grateful. Together we pray. Let us share together now in a moment of holy silence. No matter how we understand prayer, we find that it is good to pray. Together, we hold these names and words, spoken and unspoken, in a spirit of love, a spirit of concern, a spirit of joy, a spirit of connection, and now in a spirit of prayer. Oh, great love, thank you for living and loving in us and through us. May all that we do flow from our deep connection with you and all beings. Help us become a community that vulnerably shares each other's burdens. Listen to our heart's longings for the healing of our world. We offer these prayers in all the holy names of God. Amen. Let us pray together now in one voice the prayer Jesus taught his disciples. First, the common version that connects us to our grandparents and great grandparents. And then let us pray another version that speaks to many of our longings and understandings today. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Save us from our time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the mind is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our mother, who is in heaven and within us, we call upon your name, your wisdom come, your will be done in all the spaces in which you dwell. Give us each day sustenance and perseverance. Remind us of our limits as we give grace to the limits of others. 
separate us from the temptation of empire, but deliver us into your kingdom. For you are the dwelling place within us, the empowerment around us, and the celebration among us. Now is the time when we pass the peace as an act of forgiveness and reconciliation. Jesus told his disciples that before they come to be reconciled with God, they should first reconcile with one another. And so during this time of sharing Christ's peace, you are encouraged to seek and to offer forgiveness. When we turn to those around us with the greeting, may the peace of Christ be with you and respond and with you also, we symbolize our unity even in the midst of divisions. When we pass the peace, we practice God's call to make every effort to maintain the bond of peace. Since we're still mindful of COVID protocols, we will wave our peace to each other. So may the peace of Christ be with you. I am with you. I'm to pray for you. And now we come to the time of communion. And if ever Jesus gave us a model of justice, this table, or I guess that table, is it. A table where all are welcome without exception, where all are reminded of the life and way of justice embodied. This is also a table of action where we were and then are asked to take what we were given and pass it to the person next to us. Here is the truth of Sadiq. Here is God's kingdom. So Jesus took a little bit of wine off the table and he blessed it and he passed it. And then he took a little bit of bread from the table and he blessed it and he broke it and he passed it. And that's what we're going to do now too. <laughs> we're gonna pass the elements out in person. Everybody on Zoom, go ahead and gather your elements. And then we're gonna come back together and we'll eat, drink together.
wine or juice or whatever, may we remember together. And now may we pray together with one voice. Holy God, we have eaten the bread and drunk the wine. We have been touched by your spirit and we are thankful. Still speaking, God, as we go from this place to be your church in the world, may the boldness of your spirit transform us. May the gentleness of your spirit lead us. And the gifts of your spirit be our guide and strength today and in the it does <laughs> so i'm going to leave with a rewriting of one of our hymnals older songs uh christian rise and act your creed here is a telling people rise and live the way of truth and justice every day seek the right perform the true to others offer life anew Hearts around you beaten down by inequality ever round. You can help the kingdom come. All are beloved, not just some. People rise and live God's creed. The orphans, widows, beggars need. But so do women, trans and gay. Welcome all you meet along the way. Perfect love, bereft of fear, born of God and radiant here. People rise and as you do, May spirit's light shine through you. Amen. And have a great week, everyone. Amen. 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 Let's sing hallelujah. Give me a dream so I can sing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we in a circle? We're standing. Sorry, we're in a circle right now. Hallelujah.